everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz and today we're going to make this cute little fox needle hook holder. This is a compact size so it's very convenient to just pop into your bag if you are heading out and you want to crochet on the go. In mine I like to keep my hook, stitch markers, some needles, and of course a pair of scissors. And basically it was just a lot of fun to make and so I wanted to share it with you guys. To get started, I just wanted to quickly share that this is Stylecraft Special DK yarn. The color here is called Tomato. This is a DK or the equivalent to that in the US would be a sport weight. The suggested hook size for this is a four millimeter and I like to use a 3.75 millimeter hook. I thought it would be a good idea to lay everything out so you can visualize what we're working on here. This is the body or the holder itself, the pocket, the little space of color between the eyes, the ears, and then the inside of the ears. Two eyes and then we'll have two little cheeks. For the main base here, I did a row of 20 stitches, 20 single crochets, and then the height of this is 32 stitches. I changed colors after the 16th stitch, so half of it in the tomato and then half of it in the cream. When I decided on the measurement of this, I did not intend for it to cover the entire hook. You may be more interested in it doing that, and if you want to do that, just add a couple of stitches to your rows. You may even want it to fit inside of your pocket. I didn't do that here because I thought we all have different sized hooks, so I thought you could just play with that in case you want to alter it. To get started on the base, we're going to be focusing on single crochet rows. We're going to start with a chain of 20 plus one to include your turning chain. If you are very familiar with doing single crochets, you can just go ahead and skip this bit knowing that we're going to do 32 rows of single crochets. We're going to switch to the cream after the 16th row of tomato. Once you have your 21 chains, go ahead and skip the first uh, chain from the hook and do a single crochet in each stitch across. Once you've reached the end, go ahead and chain one and turn your work. This chain one does not represent a stitch. It is just to chain up to give you some wiggle room. You do not have to do the chain one. You can omit that. It's just a little bit more helpful when you're coming to the end of the row to find the stitch. In that same beginning stitch, continue on with your single crochet. Working your way back down the row. And you're just going to be doing this back and forth, back and forth for 16 rows. I'm coming to the last three chains on my row here. If it's a little bit hard at first to see this little chain here, go ahead and put a stitch marker there. Uh, sometimes we feel like we're not a good crocheter if we have to use stitch markers and that is not true at all. Okay, and then just chain up one, turn your work, and continue. To join your second color, you can either fasten off after your 16th row, or you can change colors right before you finish the last stitch on your 16th row. Before you go in with the last pull through like this, instead of using your original color here, go ahead and switch to the color you want to use next. In this case, it's a cream, and you're going to use that to attach. Now, if you like, you can take uh, both of these and tie them together to make it nice and secure. You don't have to do that, it's up to you. 
I'm going to go ahead and chain one. Be sure to put a single crochet in there for your very first stitch. That one is also quite easy to miss. And continue on. And you're good to go. And just continue with what we were doing before with 16 rows of your cream color if you're following this pattern. Time to work on the ears and the patch of color between the eyes on the fox's face. So we'll do a chain of 12 plus 1 making 13. The 13th is just your turning chain. Skip the first chain from the hook and then go into the rest of your chains with a single crochet. Okay, we're at the end. Make sure that you have 12 or whatever your desired chain length is. And at this point, as before, you can either chain one or just turn your work without it. It is completely up to you. I think with the chain up of one, it helps to see the stitches a little bit more easily, but you don't have to do it. Instead of going into that first stitch there that we normally would, we're going to skip over it. And that is how we are going to reduce our way down the row to get to our point. So by the end of this one, by the end of this row, we should have 11. There's my last one. Chain one, turn, and again, we just skip that first stitch. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's there. And then go right over it. And you should now have 10. And so on all the way down. And just keep doing this back and forth, making sure to skip that very first stitch. That will ensure that you will keep moving down very nicely to your point. Turn. We have two. And now we have just one, one space. We skip that little first stitch there and we move into the second. And we are all done with our first triangle. This is your biggest one. That is for the uh, space between the eyes on the front face of your fox. Now to continue on, you're going to do the exact same thing for your ears. For the ears, I used a chain of 10. My row started as 10 single crochets, so that is a chain of 10 plus 1 equaling 11. That will create 10 single crochets. And then just work your way down to 1. To make the ears, I sandwiched two pieces together, the two ear pieces together, and did my best to do 10 single crochets on each side, three single crochets in the corners. Now, the two single crochets in these corners did go into the count of the 10 single crochets. For example, here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go ahead and put a slip knot on your hook. I like to start in the corner and I actually use this slip knot as my first single crochet. Doing my best to get them aligned. And for now, I'm just going to do the very first single crochet. Not all three. I'll come back and do that later at the end. This is not an exact science. Just do the best you can. It may take a couple of tries to get the count 
but it should be fairly simple to kind of eyeball the spaces. Let me see where we are here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. And ten. So I've already put the first single crochet in the corner. I have my 10 on the side. I'm going to do a single crochet. That's to help me turn to the other side. And then another single crochet to count as my first on the next side. And just continue on all the way around. Okay, so I'm at the end here. I have eight stitches so far. This is number nine. And I'm back to the original corner. I've already done one of my single crochets. I need to do the tenth for this, but this will be the first of the three in this corner. One more to finish. And what I'll do here to make it less knotty, I'm going to just clip and then darn this into the other side. You can do this with a needle, a darning needle, or you can just do it with your hook like I did here. And then I'll just weave those in later. And there we have another ear. I did it this way because I wanted them to be pretty solid. You could have just done the tomato color or the fox color if you don't want it to, but I didn't want it to be very you know, flexible. I wanted it to stay stiff because I'm going to be throwing this in and out of bags and toting it around with me. I'm getting ready to join the pocket to the base here and also go ahead and outline the edge here with the single crochet. I'm going to use the fox color all the way around then it will give a nice little outline on the face here to bring it all together. I'm not going to be too too fussy with the count. The edges here will be fairly easy to do because you have the chains here to help see your count. So the edges, these two edges here are going to be 20 single crochets. The longer sides are 32 rows, so I'm trying my best to get to about 32 stitches. But I made sure to eyeball it first to see where I wanted to put my stitches and I found that the little holes here, the natural holes that were happening with each row are where I'm going to add the single crochets. And it's roughly about 30 stitches and I'm not going to sweat that. I'm not going to try to make it 32. I'm just going to go with a count of 30. I'm going to do three single crochets in the corners, but one of those single crochets on each of these sides in the corners will count for the count that I do on the sides. I'm going to add a slip knot to my hook and this is going to count as my first single crochet and I'm going to go ahead and just start in a corner and that will count as my first one. Now the true corner is right here in this little center but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go right into this easy to see space and count that as my first. That is why I'm getting less of a count. That's why I'm getting 30. And now I'm going to single crochet into each of these little gaps that I see. We'll see you when we get closer to the pocket attachment. I went ahead and put a stitch marker before I got to the end just so that I wouldn't lose count and start stitching without it. And this is pretty easy to do as well. You just line these up. Since we're just focusing on the little holes here, it's really easy to mesh it together and stay accurate with that. There we go, that'll work. Be sure to catch all four of these loops, your two V's. You want to catch all four of the loops to make sure that you get a really nice secure join. One, two. OK, 
Okay, so I'm coming to one of my first corners and what I'm going to do here is, uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, I'm not going to go to the true corner, I'm going to go into the space beforehand to make it a little bit tighter, a little bit more secure. Now unfortunately I do have this pain in the butt piece here, this is where I uh, finished off so it's a knot here and it's jutting out more than I'd like, I'm going to have to tuck that in somehow, but I think you'll still get the idea. Now you certainly can go all the way to the corner and do your three single crochets in there, but I found when I did it like that it kind of goes out a little bit too far and it just doesn't stay as uniform for me. But try both ways. Really this is your little pocket project here and it's, it's whatever you feel. I'm creating my corner with three single crochets. See I've got this little knot here that doesn't want to play nice. But that's okay, we're going to continue on and not worry about it. You won't have that issue on each corner. I'm just going to skip it now and start the next side. And I may go in and I think stitch that down later. And here is our little pocket. Have a pair of scissors that fit perfectly in there. If you like you could even do a little button in here if you wanted to, it's really up to you. So it's time to bring our fox to life and I'm going to start by tacking on the sort of the muzzle or the patch of color between the eyes here, I'm not quite sure what to call that and I think I have a button here somewhere. Yep, here it is. So I'm going to make sure that the button sort of camouflages the tip of the nose here just ever so slightly. So I'll make sure to finish the stitching on sort of around here. At the top here, I counted, I want to go in about three stitches. I'm going to tack in on the fourth stitch and the same on the other side. And we should be good to go. When you make your triangle, I would suggest that you leave a long tail when you fasten off. I forgot to, but normally I do, and then you can use that to uh, embroider this onto your piece. But because I forgot, I have a, a, a darning needle here, a tapestry needle ready to go. And it's very simple. Just be aware that you don't want to stitch the two sides together. You want to do a little bit of a surface stitch here. Uh, not going through completely because you don't want to accidentally stitch closed your little pocket here. Fox is starting to come together now and it's time to tack on the ears. So this may take a couple of tries. I'm going to try one first before we continue and I'll let you know what worked best for me. Okay, looks like we are good to go on the length. I'm going to go ahead and tack this one on off, off camera, but I think you get the idea. Just play with it, see what works for you. 
You can always undo it. As long as you don't knot anything too tightly, you can always undo it and try it again. To create the eyes and the little cheeks here, we're going to use the magic circle and create a round. For the eyes, I used a count of 10 single crochets, and for the cheeks, I used a count of eight. I'm going to use the pink here just to show you how it's done. Now, if you do not like doing a magic circle to start your, your round here, I do have a video called The Magic Tail, and I'll link to that in the description box below as well as at the end of the video. And that is a little tip or trick to get the same effect without having to do the magic circle, and it's really, really effective. But for this video, I'm going to go ahead and just do the magic circle. This counts as your first chain. That will give you a little bit of wiggle room as you work. And now we're going to do eight single crochets. I'm just working on the cheek here. Then at this point, you can slip stitch into the first chain here that you see, or you can make it a little bit neater by doing this, going into just pull through, and then right here Now you have a smoother finish. I'm going to leave these long tails here because that's what I'll use to darn into the uh, pouch or the cover. Wonderful. So our fox looks like a fox now. We've put all our pieces on and we're ready to add the last piece, which is the little loop that will work as your clasp to hold your piece together. I measured it out already and this is what I would suggest you do also. Just do a, a bunch of chains and loop it around and see what fits the best for you. I found a chain of 10 to a chain of 12 seem to work really well with this button. You're going to be attaching it here so you want it to reach across, but you don't want it to be too tight to where it's really pulling and tucking it in. Give yourself a generous tail here because you're going to use that to attach it. Wrong one. And I'm going to do a chain of 12. Okay, and at the very last loop, Go ahead and give yourself another long tail here. And then just thread that through to make a knot. Okay. And now you're going to get your tapestry needle and you are going to attach right wherever you've decided you want to attach. Yeah. 